This tutorial aims for installing the, the GNOME desktop. The GNOME desktop uh, enables you to give the opportunity to use the system with the graphical user interface. What you need to know is that um, GNOME takes uh, a l not a lot, but GNOME takes more resources as a desktop manager considered than uh, Fluxbox, that is just a window manager. But we will take a look at how to install. Uh, all of the managers. This time it will be covered the GNOME desktop. So to start with before, so we don't forget it, is that we need to add an additional user else we will be denied. And now since we created a user we need to um, uh, we should also what we need to do to get the um, the installation of everything is that we need to have um, the xorg installed which is the graphical server and then we add the gnome desktop and then we need also to make some configurations on all this so um, what I have to do the first thing is to set up my proper mirror. When installing packages remotely, the main mirror is the default one that results in if you don't change the mirror, you will download from the same mirror as everyone does after the installation. This will take a lot of time. In my case, I've been checking which mirror is nearest me and it's the Sunet of Sweden. So I'm making a command here to echo the command line inside of the file to be redirected to CSHRC. And you can check the video of installing remote packages um, via FTP and I explain you how to search and how to set the mirror. So right now I just set my mirror to make this go forward. I need to log out after this has been added and I need to log in again. Okay, so first of all what we need to do is to install the xorg server. This is done by pkg underscore add option r and the xorg. You, these packages also exist on the DVD installation medium, but I really recommend to install them over the FTP site this way because then you get, get the absolute latest. When this installs we are going to make a jump in the video. After the xorg, you need to install the gnome. And you just type pkg underscore add option r and gnome2. All these packages will take a while to install, so we're going to make a jump here also. And there we install the GNOME. The GNOME is a big package, so we were making a jump in this movie. What we need to do is that we've been adding a user, so this is done. To be able to make GNOME running correctly, we need to enable a proc file system. The proc file system is disabled by default in higher FreeBSD distributions. It's a reason of security that you don't need a procfs on server. Uh, procfs is a file system for processes. So we begin to start to edit the file. So we need to use vi, etc and uh, fstub is the file we want to edit. Here in this file we need to add a new line. We need to add proc and uh, mount point should be slash proc the type is proc fs rv as option and zero 
zero. And then you write this. So the PROC file system is a file system for processes. Uh, it's a security problem because it contains information about processes. Uh, since this is going to be a desktop, we, re we really don't worry about that type of security issues. Only if it will be a server, then we don't run any graphic at all. Uh, so now we've been adding the process file system. We need to edit the rc.conf, which is the configuration file for FreeBSD. Here we need to add following. We need to add the hall D. Uh, the hall daemon is the um, the process that uh, the daemon that is uh, uh, for automatic detection of keyboard and mouse. So if we do not enable hall D and D bus. we will get a problem that we will not be able to use mouse or keyboard. So we need to, uh, to add both of these. And the other thing we need to do is to enable for gnome underscore enable and uh, to enable the gnome services. And we need to add gdm enable. So these are the things we need to add here. Write and quit this. Uh, so the last thing we need to do, this depends on if you install it, if you install this on VMware, you want to have the correct video driver for VMware to be able to get all the resolutions. So to get the VMware driver, we need to install it from the port collection. We didn't speak anything about port collection yet, so we make a crash course how to get the ports tree and how to install the specific thing from it. We will take much more details later, so now we make it very simple. You use port snap fetch to download the port tree. This will take some while, so I'm going to make a jump in the video here also. Run this command. After the port snap fetch, we need to extract the content on our hard disk. This is done with port snap extract. This will take some while, so we make a jump here also. Now the port tree has been extracted to a hard disk drive. What we needed from the port tree is the driver for the VMware workstation video. So you do like this cd to go to the directory of usr ports make ls to uh, to view the directories and then you need to enter the c to cd to the x11 driver and what we need here is to make cd to go to the directory of xf 86 video and vm and you make a press return there so when you stand in this directory you're going to make a command here that is make install clean this is a combination of command what happens now is that the computer is downloading the source code, then it, um, it um, compiles the source code to make it to files that the computer can use to, uh, from, uh, to make it to machine code. And then after it, it installs the binaries where they should be, and then it cleans after. And this process is done. So. If you followed all these steps, everything should be okay and you just need to make a reboot to get the, uh, the GNOME desktop up and running. I'm just going to make sure that uh, I was adding an additional user by checking the home directory. I did. So now I just simply reboot.
what I can say is that GNOME Desktop takes very much time to install. There are many things including in it. This installation, if I'm going to count the time when I was aborting the uh, the sequences to uh, to make a jump between the movie it has been taking around 40 minutes I guess and I've been using the proper mirror that was nearest me so but that's naturally because I mean that the gnome comes with a lot of stuff and there is it's uh, considered as a heavy desktop compared to XFCE4 which we're going to cover in another tutorial uh, one of my favorites and if I'm going to only use uh, like a window manager, I prefer Fluxbox. So this is what's going to happen now when it restarted. The thing that will be that brings up now is the GDM, which um, helps us to make uh, make it possible to log in either with different users and uh, to have the typical login screen that is typical graphical user interfaces. So I log in as Plex, which was my additional user. And here you have the result of what you will get. This is the GNOME desktop. So that was how to install the GNOME desktop graphic user interface under FreeBSD. Um, so if you want to change uh, some few options here, I can recommend the system, preferences and the monitor to change the resolution. This is, I guess, the first thing you want to do here. So here you make these options and it's very simple to navigate through GNOME. But OK, we this was this tutorial and we will cover more about other desktop later. So keep in touch and we will see more tutorials. Enjoy.